Welcome to another episode of Cooking at the Lake. Today we're back at the Warner household, but we have a special guest, Mark Vuris. Now, Mark is actually usually behind the camera, but today he's going to honor us with coming and showing us a new dish to cook. And then we're also going to talk a lot about the broadcast committee, which Mark is in charge of, but is going to retire from that position. So thanks for being here today, Mark. We appreciate you coming. Thank, thank you for having me. And, and by the way, retiring is, is a misnomer. Oh, okay. After six years, I have to take a one-year sabbatical. I have to take a one-year break. So I'm leaving the committee, but I'll still be active with the group. Great. And I'm leaving the committee in good hands. You've done so much, Mark, and, and we'll go into that a little bit. What are we cooking today? We are doing stir-fry vegetables. Oh. Uh, it's basically a Chinese dish, but you can do anything you want with it. That's what's so great about this. If you don't like pea pods, don't put pea pods in it. If you don't like um, uh, a little baby corn, don't put corn. If you'd rather have bell pepper in it, which I can't eat, put bell pepper in it. It is totally up to you. It is so flexible, and I'll guarantee that it comes out great. <laughs> <laughs> well, we will Caveat. see. I can't wait. Okay, what's the first step? So the first step we're going to do is cut up the pork. The pork loin is a very inexpensive piece of meat that comes out really, really nice. And I've got a cleaver that I like, but I, I haven't used it in a while, so I don't know if it's gonna work great. Watch or, my fingers. Yes, absolutely. But for this recipe, we're gonna cut off this fat okay. and uh, try to get rid of that. So we're gonna cut off that fat because we don't really need it for this dish. Mm -hmm. And if we take a little bit of the pork with it, it's not a big deal. This recipe actually only calls for a half pound, and I think I've got close to a pound here. Now this also makes it a little less um, fatty and um, exactly. a little, not should I say diety, but more um, where you're not getting as much uh, fat. Well, you know, a lot of lean. people have the misconception that Chinese cooking is very, very uh, uh, fatty and, and very not good for you. Yeah. And, and there is truth to that uh, in terms of Chinese Let me get you cooking. Put that in. Sure. There is truth to that in terms of Chinese cooking where you go to a restaurant or you do carry out or what have you. But you know, if you cook Chinese at home, you're using so little amount of uh, oil that it is, it is very, very healthy. And of course, we all know oil is much healthier than butter. Mm. So the, the trick on this pork is just to slice it super thin and get it all ready to go. If you don't cook it right, it gets tough. Oh, yeah. And, and because there's no fat in it, that's, that's the key. Since I've got this all done, I'm just going to go ahead and do, oh, do please it. please do. So I'm going to mix in the soy sauce, which just calls for two tablespoons of soy sauce. Okay. And because we've got a little bit more meat and uh, vegetables than the recipe actually calls for, I'm going to double it up. Sounds great. So we'll just do, you know, four tablespoons of soy sauce. Actually, we'll make it three. We'll, we'll go the recipe and a half. Okay, sounds good. And so we take that and we add some salt and sugar. Okay. Uh, table, teaspoon of each. And I've already pre-measured this. Oh, well, that's wonderful. So that's all ready to go. Good. And then we just kind of stir that around. I see. You don't have to use a chopstick. You can use anything at all. But now what you're going to do is put this all in there and let that marinate. Mm -hmm. Mix this around a little bit. And that soy sauce will just kind of tenderize this pork. Well, now that we've got the marinade going, and it only takes about, I mean, marinades work anywhere from like 24 hours to 10 or 15 minutes um, and it works either way but while that is in the marinade would you put that in like overnight would that even make you, it better or does it matter I've never think? tried to do that so I really don't know the answer to okay. that 
I know sometimes, like on shrimp, they say don't do it more than 24 hours. Oh, I see. Uh, shrimp, you know, has a tendency to go bad easily. Mm -hmm. But I think the pork would be fine. Yeah. Okay. So part of what I want to show everyone are knife skills, a little bit, and technique using a mandolin. If you don't have one of these at home, you need one. I pre-washed the uh, celery and pre, um, you know, did the uh, carrots. You could take this and you could take a knife and cut, 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 mm -hmm. cut, cut. Or you can take a mandolin and just go boop, 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 boop. Oh, boop, wow. Boop, 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 boop. Awesome. And, and, and just like that, it's cutting it on an angle and it's making nice thin slices. Excellent. And that's about two carrots for this recipe, is that right? Yep. Okay. Yeah, the recipe actually calls for one. But again, I'm, I'm kind of adding a little bit. Yeah. We got six people we're going to be feeding here today. We always feed the crew at the end of the show. <laughs> I think it's the reason that people keep showing up to film, that's for well, sure. Well, it's certainly why I come to shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to be careful with these mandolins. Don't go all the way to the end oh, yes. because you don't want to cut your finger off. I was going to ask you a little bit about your background and how you got into um, photography and how you got into the broadcast committee and doing all the work that it does. What? How many hours do you have? Oh, well, uh, <laughs> give us the short version, not the log cabin version. All right, okay? all right. Short version is real quick. I started, uh, I started as a child. No, I just, I did start in high school doing photography. Did yearbook photography, went into the Air Force, learned a lot at their expense and still photography, ended up getting out of the Air Force and getting a job uh, in a portrait studio to begin with, and then um, going to Washington, D.C. for a job with the Department of Justice. And it was there that I started doing video. Oh. They had purchased a lot of video equipment, and back then it was huge one-inch IVC recorders and huge cameras and uh, you know, just a totally different world. Um, but I learned how to use it, and I actually started doing videotape depositions. Oh, wow. Boring. Oh, not like hard <laughs> criminals or no, spies no, no. or anything like that? No. no. Uh, rats. Um, so that was a good experience, though. Yeah. And eventually I moved over to U.S. Customs, where I did have some fun. Let me get this going here. So... At U.S. Customs, it was during the years when we were, the war on drugs was yes. the, the main thing. And so we, when I say we, it was myself and a uh, co-worker, my boss, would go down to the southwest border, down to Miami, and we would literally fly in Black Hawk helicopters all the time. He loved to fly. Whenever we went anywhere he would finagle somehow to get us a ride in a Black Hawk helicopter. Wow. So did a lot of time, never created a log of my flights, which I should have done, but um, that's where I learned how to do a lot of video there. Uh, and the way we did a lot of our video was to um, shoot the video and rough cut edit it and then go to a post house uh, for the fine-tune editing. I'm going to take a little bit of that off. Uh, the fine-tune editing, we worked with editors who were doing it every single day. And Roy Weinstock was my editor on many occasions. Uh -uh. So years later, after I retired, went into the private sector for three years with one company and three years with another company, and ended up looking for a place to retire my wife and I spent five years looking from everywhere, from North Carolina, South Carolina, Delaware, you name it. We ended up deciding on Lake Monticello. Mm. But it was one of those situations where I came home from work one day. Thank you. You're welcome. And it's a typical day. Oh, today was terrible. Today we had this, we had that. And... Uh, the, the end of the conversation with, with my wife was to say, that's it. One year from now, we're going to be retired somewhere. Let's make a decision and make it happen. And so we did. Oh. 
When we first moved here, I didn't know what to do. I was retired. What am I going to do? Okay. I heard about the broadcast group, and a fellow named Bill Schaefer was in charge of it at the time. Yeah. And Bill was a great guy. And I got involved, and I've never regretted it ever since. Let me work on the onion. Yeah, good idea. Here you are. And unfortunately, about five years ago, Bill passed away. Yes, that was and so sad. Uh, we've, we've really lost a lot when Bill left us. Now, the Broadcasting Committee, it has um, an interesting past. I know I was doing some research on it, and uh, the committee itself is like a mandatory committee for the neighborhood. Isn't that correct? That is correct. Yeah, the Board of Directors dictates that we live stream and video record the monthly um, Board of Directors meetings and make them available uh, wherever we can, which predominantly in the past has been channel 977 on Comcast. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple years ago, we started experimenting with putting it up on YouTube. And that has worked out real well. Mm -hmm. We have a very good uh, following on YouTube of about, well, at this point, about five to 600 uh, members. And um, that helps yeah, that for everybody to have the opportunity to see uh, our productions. Mm -hmm. uh, originally, it was Adelphi was the uh, uh, cable. Uh, and to get into the community back then, they had to, uh, you know, offer incentives to a community to be able to be the broadcast, uh, you know, the cable company in that community. And so they were the ones who gave us money, absolutely. Mm -hmm. When Comcast took over, they said, no, we're not doing that oh, anymore. Oh. <laughs> they said, you know, we'll continue to support the channel. And they give us two channels, actually. One is the 977, which is the broadcast uh, programming. And again, this is on Comcast, if you still have Comcast cable. And the other is 978, which is the community channel. It's a basically it's it's a bulletin board mm. of uh, of programs. Well, it's amazing. It's um, that it supplied a lot of the funding for the the program and the committee. Yep. Not just came from the budget that the dues are paid from, but they yep. were negotiated from the cable company, which is fantastic. Absolutely. And then when the new clubhouse was built, wasn't it that um, they wired it all up for free? That was like their donation. Is that correct? Correct. The cost to put fiber optics in the fairway clubhouse, because it had to connect back to the head end at the Ashlawn clubhouse, um, cost about $3,000. And, you know, LMOA would have had to pay that other than the fact that Comcast was willing to do it without any cost. I guess in lieu of giving us money for, for equipment. Yes. So this might seem strange, but I'm gonna put these onions right in here with the pork. Okay. All right. So the next thing we're gonna tackle is our garlic. And this, again, this calls for, and let me just see. It calls for two cloves of garlic, mm, crushed into a paste. Keep the vampires away. Yeah, that's right, absolutely. But per my standing uh, routine, I do more than what they call for. Mm. If you don't like garlic, don't come to my house. <laughs> I so, understand. the way I do garlic is I cut off the end and I cut off that end. Uh huh. Okay. And all right. Then once you got all that cut off, you take the side of your knife and you go squish. Oh, yeah. well, squish something more like that. Okay. So do you keep it as a whole piece? No. Nope. Oh. No. Nope. I'll show oh, you in just okay. a second. So you separate off all of that. Mm -hmm. Now some people, my wife, pops the garlic into a microwave for 10 seconds and she says it comes out fine and just peels off, you know, easy. It, it, you know, 
whatever way you do it, sure. whatever way works. I've never heard of that. I think that's interesting. Yeah. I might try that one day. When uh, now I love using Ooh, a garlic press. Yeah. It makes life so simple. It does. So you You're simply right. I'm gonna use a little bigger bowl. Let me just go with this bowl. Having these small little bowls, by the way, is really, really helpful. And I'll show you when we go to cook um, how helpful they can be. Well, plus then you can all do all the cut up and prep and yeah. then go on. That is an absolute with Chinese cooking. You do not want to start cooking mm -hmm. until all of your prep is done. And when your prep is done and you're ready to cook, it goes super fast. So I've got three garlic in there, which I think will be enough. I do too. And you know, um, the other day I was looking in the grocery store, especially like at Wegmans, they have um, pre-cut up simple things like onion and celery and carrots. Uh, just, and you know, if you don't feel like you want to do that, but you want the recipe, sometimes um, you don't have to even do that. So it's yeah. kind of nice to know that that's there. Absolutely. Especially if you're entertaining or something and you're like, oh, I just want to spend a lot more time. Here, I'll help with that. Um, with my guest and less time with uh, trying to yeah. cut up vegetables. You can, you can actually go in the grocery store. Now, you know, Food Line may or may not have it. Uh, but I've found in the grocery store in the bagged um, sections for vegetables, stir fry you know, it's got onion, it's got garlic. Mm. Uh, it may not have garlic, but it's got onion, it's got celery, it's got carrots. Yeah, and it's mm. all ready to go. Yeah. So if you're only cooking for two people, oh, yeah. you don't need a big wok like we're going to use here. Use a small wok or even a frying pan, even though uh. a wok is better, woks are better. Uh, and that way you can then cook for two. You don't need to cook a huge amount. I've previously peeled and, and strung the pea pods. Okay. So if you know if you know pea pods are great, but they're they've got little tips in the end or tend to be a little bit tough and they have string along the edges that you know some people don't like. So I, I took care of that. Okay. Sounds good. And um, now Mary Jane, what yes. else do we need to tell everyone about the broadcast group? Oh I know we need more help. Ah, that's it. That's <laughs> one of the big things that we need. We really desperately need people to join us and come work with us and have fun with us. I mean, these productions that we do are really fun to work on. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, you don't need to be uh, have experience. You don't need to be knowledgeable. If you're willing to learn and you want to get involved, one great thing about coming to do the board meetings is you get to watch and listen to every board meeting. And that you is do. a plus unto itself. <laughs> it is. So, you're very you're knowledgeable about what's going on in the community, but you're also servicing uh, and helping out to make sure that everybody else gets to see it. Providing a very, very valuable service. Absolutely. Truly. But they're also, you can call the office and they'll give you contact information as well. Absolutely. You know, um, I was, I, when I came to the lake, we went to our uh, first uh, newcomers meeting and y'all had gotten up there and you said that we really needed some help. And, you know, we need some faces in front of the camera. A lot of us like to be behind the camera, but nobody seems to want to be in front of the camera. And I had no experience at all at this, you know. And so, but I thought, wow, that'd be kind of exciting. So I joined the committee and it took a while. And you guys, y'all were tough on me. You were like, well, first you've got to produce a show for two years and you got to do all this and you got to write a script and I'm like hmm so I called Pat Singer and I said Pat can you just grab a camera and come over to my house and let's just film Nancy Parsons she's my cohort in crime and let's just try it and see if it'll work and so well, Pat, he's such an honest guy. He's like, well, I really need to tell Mark. And so uh, I was like, oh, well, that killed it right there. But no, um, it no well, I was only kidding. Uh, but uh, so then y'all came over as a big production and it really worked out well. And that was four years ago. And I'm talking about no experience in doing this at all. Now, everybody doesn't work in front of the camera and everybody doesn't work behind the camera. Like I, I want to give back too, and I want to learn things. So I'm 
normally go over and film at the board meeting. And I've really gotten a lot of experience, had a lot of fun with it. It's just a really great group of people, number one, but you learn things. I mean, didn't have any experience at it. A lot of people are like that, but they wanted to learn something new. And it is a great hobby, isn't yeah. it? It really yeah. is. So even if you don't know anything, but you want to do something different and learn, I highly suggest you join the broadcast committee. And, and Mary Jane is a absolute natural. <laughs> As a host, she has stepped in and come up with ideas like cooking at the lake was your idea. Mm -hmm. uh, life at the lake was your yeah, idea. Yeah. And we're going to be doing more and more of those uh, in the next year to come for certain. Uh, they're just great programs that I think everybody enjoys. Mm -hmm. I and think so, too. You can always tell when a program has been well-received because of the number of views it gets on our YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. On Channel 977 on Comcast, we have no way of gauging the viewership. But on YouTube, we see how many people have seen the program. And it's in the hundreds and, and even three or four or five hundreds sometimes. So, uh, well, my sister is most proud of her yes. cheese straw episode on Cooking on the Lake because it has over 2,500 hits. So, of course, my sister has a very large mouth and gets the word <laughs> out there. But um, definitely, if you need to learn how to make cheese straws, you should look at that episode because it's really yeah. pretty cool. Uh, all right. So the next step. One of the things you want to think about in terms of what to cook and how, how to cook it is density. Uh, if you've done any kind of a stew, you know that carrots take longer than potatoes, all right? Well, the same, the same is true in stir fry. We are going to start with peanut oil, and peanut oil really is the best. The recipe calls for about two tablespoons of oil, but again, we just kind of we just kind of judge it. I, I don't know if a lot of people know the difference between different oils like olive oil and peanut oil and vegetable oil is their temperature, the temperature at which they'll start to smoke. Mm. And so peanut oil has a high level of um, heat before it starts to smoke. And of course, if things start to smoke shortly after that, they'll start to burn. Definitely. And that's really the trick of the Chinese cooking process of stir frying. Because once you get started, you're going to be stirring constantly. So we're going to leave that on and we're waiting for that oil to get hot. Uh, and the, re the way I'm testing it is I'm taking this bamboo stick and I'm just sticking it in there. When it starts to bubble, and I don't know if you can see the bubbling. So again, it's hard. You might not be able to see the bubbling yeah. when I turn it, but it, it's getting there. Now that we've got that, first thing we're going to do is put in our garlic. Mm. Oh, you can hear it if you can't see it, that's for sure. Wow. Absolutely. Yeah. Looks good already. Mm. And you can get the fragrance from it. Mm -hmm. oh, that's nice. Again, you don't want it to burn, so you're going to quickly go in and put in your pork and onion. Oh, that looks wonderful. I, I still chair oh, wow. the photography group and we meet once a month. And that's a good group of people. Um, our goal there is just to learn how to be better photographers, whether you work with a uh, cell phone or a more expensive camera. Uh, and it's not like cell phones are cheap either. Mm -mm. But if you have a camera out there that you don't even know how to use, maybe coming to the club will educate you on what you ought to do. I learned a lot during the time that I was going. I, I can't do it now because I went back to work, but right. it's a great group. And didn't you teach a photography class at um, TVCC? I actually taught video production. Oh. Again, when we first moved here, I was looking for things to do, and TVCC was looking for someone to teach um, video production, video editing. And although I've learned so much more since then, uh, I went and said, okay, I can teach it. Well, this is looking good. It's coming together nicely. The trick is to keep it moving. And that's going to continue to cook. So now we're going to add our snow peas. 
and our carrots. By the way, I did wash my hands before we started. Good. Just so you know. It's looking great. And very colorful. Very nice yes. dish. Yeah, that's that's also what's nice about this. And the water chestnuts, yeah, we'll just keep going here. Celery, water chestnuts. I must say, if you have an idea, too, for a show, um, come into the broadcast committee and run it by us and oh, see what we, uh, what we can do. A lot of it is is not just great ideas, but what we physically can do uh, as far as production is concerned. So we didn't talk about it before. I'm using just regular cabbage. Uh, you can go to the store and find Chinese cabbage, which might be a little bit different. Uh, but again, you just kind of toss that in and that along with your corn. There we go. Perfect. And again, we're just kind of kind of keep stirring this up. We're going to give this about maybe, well, there's a lot in here, so we'll give this five minutes. Now, you wouldn't need to serve anything on the side of this because you've got your meat, you've got your vegetables. Right. Wow. Uh, but more often than not, you want to add rice. Okay. And Mike Warner, who is Mary Jane's husband, was kind enough to cook rice in his rice cooker mm. uh, to go along with this for our crew who's going to taste test this and make comments, positive or negative. Mm, see? It good. has got a little bit of everything. So that was one cup of uh, beef broth. And you can use beef broth, you can use pork broth if you want to go there, or even chicken broth. And what we're going to actually do is bring this to a boil. Okay. I'm going to let it kind of sit, and I'm going to open up the middle a little bit so I can see when it's boiling. And then we're going to add a little cornstarch um, to thicken it up a little bit. Okay. So cornstarch works great. Flour if you prefer flour. But it's got to be hot, so it's got to be boiling. So what more can I tell you about the broadcast group? We need help. We have a great time doing what we do. Uh, a lot of what we do, uh, I think, helps sell the lake. By the way, if you're wondering YouTube where, go to YouTube and type in Lake Monticello Owners Association. Not homeowners, but Owners Association. Look for the little sailboat that's our icon and then click on that and then hit subscribe and uh, the bell. And you will get all of the... Uh, you get notices whenever we post something, and you can go there and look and see all of the different videos that have been produced over the last 10, 15 years. Yes. Uh, well, if you've got a, a couple dishes, yeah, we, I'll be we, happy can, to we can take a bite do that. and see. I'm going to let it continue to cook um, do even bowls. while we're doing that, sure. and then we'll call it a wrap. Oh, this looks delicious. Now, if, you, if your tastes are more towards salty, then you can put a little soy sauce on Absolutely. that. Is that correct? Yep. It's oh. always nice to try it first. And I, and I didn't add, you can also add a little hot sauce. Cool. Um, my preferred hot sauce is called Sambo Olique. And it comes in a jar, and it's like a paste. And it just allows you to control the, um, the amount. And a little hot sauce can go a long way. I'm going to use this knife as if it's needed. But these pork pieces are a little bit mm. large, too. Mm. Mm. That is very good. It's mild in a way mm -hmm. so it's not so strong but it's delicious it has a lot of flavor to it mm. Mm. that was wonderful mm. and it just gets better and better i think that's great because a lot of people like a little milder dish and then there's always you can put other things in it mm -hmm. so even those pepper flakes you know you oh, can put that in there pepper yeah oh. Well, well, it's delicious, Mark. Thank you so much for showing us how to make such a delicious meal. And Thank thanks you. a lot for the information on the broadcast committee. Thank you for having me. And well, thank you for having this whole crew in your house 
on multiple occasions. Oh, I love it. It's a lot of fun. So, well, if you have a wonderful quick recipe, an easy recipe, then please contact me at Mary Jane Warner 2501 at gmail.com and we would love to have you on our show. Until next time, thanks so much and y'all enjoy your dishes. Bon appetit.